Hi Taurus, welcome to your mid-May 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. Um, okay, I'm just going to give you a bonus card to think about, and I'll say the Nine of Pentacles in the upright position. The reason I'm doing this over, I had pulled that first card while I was yammering away, and I'm not quite sure if it was upright or not. Um, you know, I like to be more intentional when I'm doing these readings. But the Nine of Pentacles is a good card, so if it was upright, and it probably was, then um, you go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very... It's kind of funny. I've got my own little rules that I follow. And I don't like to, if I'm not really thinking, of course I'm doing it again by talking right now, but at least I'm thinking a little bit more about this. Okay, which one do I want? I guess I'm going to pick this one after all. You know what? I've been getting the Magician card a lot. I haven't done, I think you're the sixth sign I've done. Um, but we're talking about the mid-May period. And um, let me think. Oh, yes. Oh, let me just say, I've already done an astrology forecast for May, so you can check out my channel if you haven't listened to that. Uh, but just to give you a heads up for the mid-month, we're having retrogrades in Saturn. As a matter of fact, today's the 11th. It could be today that Saturn goes retrograde. And this is an Aquarius, so of course it's a another fixed sign, and for you this is actually the 10th house of career. But here's a perfect example of how this does not always show up in that house. I have Taurus rising, and in my chart, um, this is showing up in my, because it, it's at uh, one degree of, of um, Aquarius, it's actually in my ninth house, not my 10th house. So my midheaven is like three degrees of Aquarius or something along those lines, three or four degrees. So, yeah, very interesting, to say the least. So, in any case, um, this can, this, if this is in your 10th house, um, even if it's in your 9th house, this can be just a review, because uh, it will go back into Capricorn. So, either way, it will go back into that 9th house. And how do the 9th and 10th houses connect? Well, depending on where you are in your journey, you may be even thinking about a career in um, something with a religious or spiritual theme. Uh, at the very least, the ninth house can be about, um, you know, your philosophy of life, long distance travel, higher learning. And in some cases, if you are, if this is occurring in your ninth house, um, and I'm giving you a preview because everyone will experience this sooner or later, but um, if this is occurring in your ninth house right now, this can be like, do I really want to keep going in college? Because that could be the ninth house. You know, is this really going to bring me to the place where I want to be so that I can have a certain career, tenth house? For those who this is in the tenth house, this can be like, you know, what are you working towards? Is this really, you know, what you think is going to do it for you in the long haul, not just kind of like it temporarily? So uh, there may be a lot to think about, but your ruler Venus is going retrograde too, and that's going to be on the um, 13th, and that's going to be uh, in Gemini. So this is in the second house of earned income and uh, going direct in late June. So um, just the type of, you know, the money that you're making, um, is it, if you're, if you're really um, kind of like feeling lured to stick with something because of the financial gain, um, maybe thinking about what your values are, how it relates to your self-esteem. These are all Venus topics in the second house. And believe me, they do connect. Sometimes people are materialistic because they're trying to buy their self-esteem with designer labels and all that stuff. I grew up, um, 
I, I was a teenager during the time when designer clothes became a thing in the late, eight, and I'm sorry, the late 70s and early 80s. And I was like, oh my God, oh, you have a pair of Calvin Klein jeans, you have a pair, you know, all these things. And um, that was a big thing. And now, you know, and then, you know, of course, after a while, these things don't mean as much because you find out that they're very, <laughs> they're very cheaply made. Um, maybe not at first, but when they were mass produced like that, and so the values that you're assigning to something may not be really, you know, all that glitters is not gold. And I have that on the right of the Buddha. That actually is um, fool's gold. So very apropos. <laughs> the first card that you have here is the um, Ten of Cups. This is a card of... Um, you know, marriage. This is a card of family harmony. Um, if you are somebody that has been staying home because of your of the situation, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, I see, I'm not a parent, but I love to see these parents out here with their children. And they may have, you know, very strong families regardless, but I think the children really appreciate it that they're all doing things together, going on bike rides and wa taking walks together. And this may be what's happening with you. So um, regardless of other aspects of your life at this time, this may be like a saving grace or like a, um, something that is really a highlight of your life at this time. And in the past position, we have the 10 of pentacles. Now, this can be family money. If you, um, if you received an inheritance, this is the inheritance card. Um, let me think about, well, here's an interesting thing. Um, looking astrologically in June, which is not that far away, <laughs> let's get real here. Um, there is going to be a lunar eclipse in your 8th house, okay? The 8th house for you... Oh, I'm sorry, for you it would be... Yeah, no, in Sagittarius. Okay, so the thing that this can represent is maybe some kind of money coming... The 8th house can be money from, from other sources that's coming in. Um, maybe in a very dramatic sort of way. A... a big statement from the universe that is related to, to inheritance. Um, and sometimes these eclipses are experienced earlier than the actual date. So if this is something that has been, this is in the past position, so this would have been something that already happened. But whatever this money is, or maybe a family business, this could be a Capricorn, especially, or another Earth sign. I say Capricorn because 10, 10th house. But maybe it, it's, you know, another sign. I don't know. Um, and uh, the other Earth signs are Taurus and Virgo. Taurus like you and Virgo. Um, if you've met somebody recently and this person is marriage material or that they are that they really get along with your children your other relatives this can be like a wonderful thing now there is something though that you have to make a decision and it's difficult so i'm wondering if the ten of cups could be that you have a basically good marriage. So the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, and then the Two of Swords. Now this is the spiritual message about some kind of a decision. As the spiritual message, I would focus on that blindfold and say, are you getting involved with something, Taurus, that could disrupt a happy situation, a happy marriage, um, because of 
somebody that you've met, maybe they have a lot of money, maybe they are somebody that is like if you're if you consider yourself somebody who is kind of flighty romantically if your venus is in either aries or gemini i think that's possible because they're adjacent to you you may be kind of more flirtatious or into the um, novelty of a situation and even if you have gotten married you may get bored easily you you could have and you know and i i want to say if there's anything like that it might be that that person is not right for you so don't get me wrong because sometimes the person is a good person but you know that you're not in love with them you know that you don't really feel that kind of stimulation from them not talking about down there <laughs> i'm talking about just that you're that you feel like that person stimulates you intellectually that you have that kind of rapport that could be lacking and that person could still be a good person maybe you have ch a child or children together and it was okay until you met this person and you really feel like this is the one that can certainly be the case but if you have a pattern of doing this of being in a good relationship and then mucking it up because you meet somebody else because you're looking you're you're not really committed to the person that you're with so you have to be able to decide and kind of wade through that the two of swords to me is about not being not making a decision with blinders on you know really seeing the situation for what it is if you have hard angles to neptune mercury to neptune like a square opposition or even a conjunction um you know the moon venus that's a big one that i get when i do love readings and personal readings because a lot of times when people have a venus square neptune they tend to pick the wrong person for them for themselves is that the right grammatical saying um so yeah all kinds of things could be going on here now i'm sorry if i'm focusing on relationships with this but that's really what jumped out at me so you know <clears throat> what crosses you is the three of swords this is a card of heartbreak also a card of kind of like not making a clean break so if there's something going on where you're maybe dragging your feet you don't want to hurt the other person and you want to like let them down easily with some of the things that's that are going on there could be the tendency to prolong the agony so um i'm going to not um really belabor this point i'm i'm sure that this is not uh relatable to all of you but um for those who do resonate with it definitely um if you know in your heart that you're not in love with somebody consider being very um you know make sure that you are absolutely certain that this is not within yourself that you're not going through something but if you know that you you have to break up your marriage i mean that's what it would be that's what the ten of cups would be or even break an engagement um plans to move in with somebody if you if you feel like you have to do that make sure that you are certain enough about it that you're not going to go back and forth because um you know it is scary sometimes to just like cut and run but um sometimes it's important to let the other you know let the other person off the hook too now this is an interesting card what's coming in we have the six of cups the soulmate card and that could be um indicative of this is why you're doing what you're doing 
because you're waiting for that soulmate. You or maybe that ten of Oh, you know, I didn't think of it that way. Maybe this is a cancer individual. Maybe the uh, person that you were with is the one with the money. And that's when you married for money, and now you're with somebody who you really love and who you feel like this could be the one. Um, yeah, definitely. So that soulmate energy. Um, cancer, this is associated with cancer. Sometimes this can be somebody from your past. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Did I even talk about with the Venus retrograde? It could bring somebody from your past. And Venus is your ruler, so you may feel this particular retrograde more deeply than somebody else but oh that's very interesting um oh there was something else i wanted to say oh what i wanted to say is that there's also a a solar eclipse in zero degrees of cancer in june now this is right before that um i mean i'm sorry this is a couple weeks after the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. So, you know, first you have your 8th house, 8th house activated, and then you have your 3rd house. And um, that could certainly be something that is um, happening for some of you where uh, it, maybe it's even through the internet, somehow you communicate with this person. Um, and the Venus retrograde is still in play, even at that time, on June 21st, which is at the time of the summer solstice, the day after, but, you know, within that time frame. So it might be a power period for you. And then we have the outcome, which is the magician. Love this card. And it's really about creating your magic, your alchemy. And so wherever you are right now, um, taking those steps, being self-empowered to be able to um, create the life of your dreams. Not waiting for the perfect transit or the perfect situation to arise, but really feeling that you have some control over that and taking those steps. So I hope that you uh, resonated with that somewhat, uh, Taurus, to some degree or another. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.